Hi. In today's videos, we're going to be talking about fault tolerance strategies, specifically the retry strategy. Our retry strategy is going to be one that is going to be used to avoid responding back with unnecessary failure statements to your to the client. So essentially, the process is going to be that you're going to receive a failure message back, and instead of returning a failure message to the client, you're actually going to retry processing that message until you can get a, a success message back. So the risk we're going to avoid are really going to be avoiding unnecessary failure responses. But the question you might have is, how do I know when I need to retry processing a message versus when do I just simply send back a failure response? So the first thing that we want to talk about when we talk about when to retry is going to be whether we have a transient error or a poisoned message. So when I say those two words, basically what I mean by a transient error is this is an error that could cut, uh, just pop up every once in a while, but if you retry doing it, it's going to just go away. Versus a poison message is one of those where no matter how many times, times you uh, retry that, you're going to receive a failure. So some examples would be a transient error would be maybe a timeout error or something where you have some connectivity error versus a poison message could be something like a uh, invalid password response. A good way to think about it is generally your 400 errors, which are going to be server side errors, are going to be retries. Versus your 500 errors, which are going to be client side errors, you don't want to retry. Now, with that being said, not everything's going to be a 400 or 500 error. So if you have some other type of response, just retry. It's not going to hurt to retry a message. Um, even if it is a, a poison message, you're just simply going to get the failure responses back. So you just want to go and if it's a 500 uh, response, it's generally not going to be something that you, that's going to you know, be fixed over time versus a 400 may be able to be fixed over time. Another consideration when we're talking about when to retry is you want to make sure that the strategy you're utilizing is an item potent strategy. What I mean by that is, say for instance you were to use a post message where you're going to go and try and post a, a message to another system. If you try and retry that, you actually will probably get duplicated messages being posted to your, to your other system if for some reason they were to post and still get a failure back. Versus your item potent strategies such as uh, your get or your put um, or even deletes or some of the more uh, uncommon ones such as your head or options are generally strategies where you, it's okay to, to go and do retries with these versus your non-item potent strategies you generally don't want to be doing that with. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at what this pattern looks like in practice. So if we think about our general structure, we have a client. That client's going to be calling an API. And that, that API is going to be calling some kind of a data source, or maybe it's another API, something along those lines. So if we think about this in terms of the calls that we're going to be making, we'll start off with our first call, which is a client calling the API. The API is going to in turn call that data source. 
And let's say that for whatever reason, we get uh, some kind of a transient error that comes back. So we've got a failure here. Now this API should have the logic inside of it to say, hey, I'm going to go and retry this. So we can go and make a successful call back over to this data source and say, okay, let's try again. Let's give me that data. This time we're going to actually get the data back. So we've got the, that data back for the second, second call. Now to the client, it just looks like, you know, I made one call and I'm just gonna get my data back just the first time I called it. So that's the beauty of this pattern is that you can go through and have the logic in your API that will, just because it receives a, a, a failure response back, doesn't necessarily mean it needs to respond back to the client with a failure message. Now, there are some considerations. So some of those considerations are going to be really making sure that the amount of time in between your retries is short. You also want to make sure that you have a limited number of retries. So as I'm sure you could tell, if you were to keep going in the same circle over and over and over again and retrying, eventually it's going to time out or you know, your client, you're gonna need to return back a failure message at some point. So you need to have a limited number of retries. Lastly, the other piece that you wanna make sure that you're taking into account here is that you have a timeout strategy associated with these so that if you do need to fail this API, you un that you can understand how long that it's supposed to be uh, before it's supposed to be receiving that message back. So you wanna have a short retry period or a short timeout period, I'm sorry. So just to recap really quickly, our retry strategy is really gonna be used for avoiding unnecessary, fa unnecessary failure responses back to your client. Um, you wanna make sure that you're only retrying on transient messages and not on poison messages. If you're unsure, you can go ahead and retry. It's not really going to hurt, uh, but it's gonna be more productive if you just make sure your client errors that you're not responding back with. Um, the other things you wanna make sure of is that you're using an item potent uh, HTTP method such as get, put, or delete and that you have your a limited number of retries, you have a short uh, period of time in between when you do the retries, and that you also have a timeout period with that. So with that, that's our retry fault tolerance strategy. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.